morning. I am starting my day. I try to wake up early in the morning. Sometimes work, sometimes not work, but I am trying to be uh, ready for my chickens always. The first is to go to the chicken coop. This is the place that they are sleeping at night time and here they are laying eggs. I usually to feed them with uh, vegetables, carrots, beans, rest of the crops. And water is always very important. I usually to put the water, a uh, lemon in the water and in different containers all over the property. Mm, for me, the priority are the hens with the baby chicks. And I usually to put them in a cage with the food to be protected. And the same thing I am doing uh, with all the uh, animals I have in my property. I have chickens, uh, ducks, and guinea fowls. I usually to leave, the, uh, to leave them free to choose uh, their food as well, yeah? We have a mother with the chicks here. This is a bantam hen. They are very intelligent, very docile, uh, very good mothers. And here you can see the guinea foals. Why guinea foals? They eat a lot of insects. Here we have the duck coop. At the moment I have one uh, duckling with a surrogate mother and I have a pond for the other ducks I have. But I like them enjoying life, yeah. That is the most important. And to be close to nature. At the, mom at the moment, we have a lot of hens with babies. Unfortunately, it's very sunny. They really, they like to enjoy sun. And uh, they are very sociable. All the animals living here, they are interactive, interacting with the rest of the animals. There are different breeds, uh, for example, in chickens I have bantams, silkies, creoles, and um, kikirikis. With uh, ducklings, I have uh, Moscovy ducks and uh, Peking ducks.
Look at there is another mother. This is a Creole hen with chicks. They love air worms. Now that we finish our work with the chickens, we are going to join Roger and Joe. Ah, yeah, yeah. Chop off what I need to cut off. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. So make it flat again. Yeah. And then, then I'll uh, sand it all down. It's Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to our channel. Thanks so much for all your subscribes, your comments. We appreciate it. Today, I'm here in Vilcabamba with my good friends Roger and Paulina. Thank you for having us today, Roger and Paulina. Oh, thanks to come to our place. You are always welcome. Roger and Paulina are members of our homestead group, and they do a wonderful job homesteading here on their piece of property in Vilcabamba. This is a beautiful place. Paulina is like the chicken queen. Yeah. She's got a lot of babies. <laughs> She's got chickens everywhere, and uh, we're going to show you some video of that and some pictures, and uh, we're going to let her tell you a little bit about that. So, uh, Roger and Paulina, Roger, can you tell me where you're from originally and how long you've lived here? I'm from Wales originally. I was born at a young age, and uh, <laughs> when I was 26 years old, I left the UK and went to Canada to live. I spent many, many good years in Canada until it went downhill fast. And now I'm decided I to get out of there. So I went to Ecuador. <laughs> Fled North America like a lot of people and are doing. I, actually, I, I, I went on the internet and I got in touch with Santiago and um, they, they had property for sale here, just land. So I bought it, sight unseen in okay. Canada, right? And uh, that would help me get here legally, right? So you so, use the property for your visa? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and that was 12 years ago, no? Yeah. Yeah, and then Santiago, uh, I hired him to build this house for me. And uh, I'm in a nice uh, um, Ecuadorian community here, which is lovely. And uh, Santiago used his uh, local employees in the neighborhood to do all the work here. And uh, it's just lovely. I, I've had no problems at all here. Fantastic. Fantastic. And Paulina, you are born and raised in Quito? Yes, I am Ecuadorian. I born in Quito, and now I am living three years here in Bocabamba. Fantastic. Well, how did you two meet? Uh, we met uh, uh, each other at the airport and the international area. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I understand you used to work in the Quito airport. Yeah, I was uh, working in the airline industry for 24 years. Wow. Um, in the lost and found yeah. department. And I, <laughs> That's and I, how and she I, found and, you. And I was lost. <laughs> and I, I was found lost. him. <laughs> Ah, amazing grace. Yeah. That's right. So, and so then you met Roger and decided to retire and move down here to Bilcabango, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you enjoy it here? Yeah, it's a very nice place. I really like the, the weather here, the water, the environment, and to live in a nice community is something like uh, a very nice experience for me. It's not the same to be living in a city that uh, nobody knows you and sometimes could be very dangerous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you get to look at this lovely view every day. That can't be too bad. Yeah, to wake up and to see the landscapes are amazing. Yeah? It's like a therapeutic. Therapeutic, definitely. Yeah, definitely. it's very nice. And you've got a wonderful view of Mandango here too. Seems like everybody yes. has a little different view of it. You know, I see I know. the complete opposite side that you guys do. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it's a great view, great view. Yeah. So, um, I see the UFOs landing every night. You see the UFOs? I have a tinfoil hat for you in the car. Let me go get it. Okay. <laughs> we don't want them reading your thought waves or anything. Oh, yeah. Ah, 
So, um, yeah, Roger and Paulina, they're wonderful people. I have a great sense of humor, as you can tell. And uh, they've been very uh, great members of our homestead group and have been participating and, and uh, bringing presentations and things. And that's always good because we try as a group to share our knowledge and increase each other's knowledge and well-being together. And just walking around Pauline and Roger's place here, um, you can get a pretty good education. Tell us about all the animals that you have here. I have uh, chickens, ducks, and guinea fowls. For example, in uh, chickens, I have silkies, bantams, creoles, and kikirikis. Very good, very good. And uh, with ducks, I have uh, Peking ducks and Muscovy ducks. Pekings and Muscovy both. Wow, yeah. Yeah, both. Yeah. Some people say the Muscovy is not even really in the duck family, but it looked like yeah, a duck to I me. Yeah, I have heard that, yeah. 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 yeah, Yeah. and they are very docile. It's a very nice experience to raise them. Good. Mm -hmm. It walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. Swims like a duck. It's probably a duck. Yeah. yeah. Water runs off. His Water runs off his back. Yeah, it's a duck. It's a duck. So, um, in the, the most people in North America probably don't know about Creole chickens, um, yeah. but they're very popular here, aren't they? The Creole. Yeah, the Creoles are very resistant to different kind of disease. Uh -huh. And um, they don't have a lot of. Uh, they are growing very fast. It's very easy to raise them. The Creoles are really good breed. Yeah, and they are uh, looking for their food, digging holes to get airworms, eating a lot of weeds. The same thing Bantams. They really like to eat uh, weeds, leaves, moringa. So yeah. they're really good foragers. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we are feeding them with corn, but they, they are not eating a lot of corn. Is they, they prefer to go and look for their food in the garden. Ah, uh, yeah. That's good. All the bugs and worms. Yeah, and... they are taking their options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to have options. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and I think that anytime you can raise a a local bird that is more of a scavenger, more of a, um, a forager, you're going to have a much more um, disease resistant, more resilient bird all the way around. Um, it's, I see some of them have crossed with the uh, barred rocks that you have, and that's, that's probably going to make a real good breed. The barred rock is a great dual purpose bird. They're great for meat production as well as egg production. Mm -hmm. And so by letting them cross with the uh, creoles and Probably make a really good bird. Mm. Yeah. You've got a lot of fruit trees here on the property too. What all do you have here? We have um, mango, uh, passion fruit, um, avocados, bananas, a lot of bananas, moringa. Mm, dragon fruit. Uh huh. Dragon fruit. Um, what else? And you've got some beautiful almond trees. And, uh, almond tree. Yeah. Yeah, those are really nice. No almonds yet, but soon, hopefully. So, Paulina, um, what would you like to tell our subscribers? What do you think is important about living in Vilcabamba and homesteading? Uh, I think it's important to be self-efficient. We have been trying to be self-efficient, but sometimes it's hard. And a very big point to be living here in Belcabamba is like a, you have a big community and you can trade your products with other persons. So like if you had a, an abundance of eggs, you could trade eggs for some vegetables. Yeah, um, or chicken exchange feed or... Uh, animals for another animal. Yeah, it's like a very nice experience. I think in this moment, all of humanity is uh, waking up and uh, returning to raise and grow their own food. This is an extremely important time to be doing that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really hard with the different weather patterns we're having right now. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, I'm still growing some food. 
Um, yeah. Not a lot, but I'm growing some. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes it's not easy, but the most important is to try and to do it. Yep. And so we could trade rabbits for chickens. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, I get tired of eating rabbit meat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. would be a nice experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This nice meat. So I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think this is a, a, an important time for this planet. If people are not thinking about homesteading, about raising some of their own food, and you don't have to be, you know, sufficient in everything. Uh, if you could just be self-sufficient in one thing even, yeah. get started there, even if it's just one plant on your patio. Yeah, that's true. It's and very just, important. Yeah, so, you know, you start small and with what you can handle and then add on as you see fit and as you think you can handle it. Too many people go out, I think, and try to tackle the whole thing all at once and then they wind up burning out, wearing themselves out, and they can't get a handle on the, the task. Yeah, and another very important point is that you need to keep yourself healthy, yeah, to, to, wor to work hard because to be uh, running a farm is not easy. It's not easy. Keeps if you, you fit. yeah, keep you fit to work and try the best for you. Yeah, I agree 100%. Well, this will keep you fit running up and down these stairs you have here. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of work involved, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in addition, you need to love animals as well. Yeah, it's important to love everything that you are making. So, Roger, I understand you prefer the ducks over the chickens. Can you tell me more about that? Okay, that's a duck egg. It's bigger than, than a chicken egg. And that's a duck egg as well. Let me see so that duck egg. You get more yeah, that's benefit a big egg. Right, from that. I'm very nutritive. More beneficial. Yeah. Ducks are more resistant to disease than chickens are. And the ducks will, will lay eggs from three to four years consistently. Oh. Yeah. yeah, chickens are about three years. Three years maximum. Yeah. They start to. Chicken. Yeah. Yeah, going down. Yeah, yeah so, most people um, don't know that over chicken's lifetime, you know, somewhere around 275, 300 eggs, and that's about all they're going to lay. Yeah. And also, ducks are easier to catch. <laughs> 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 and yeah, they're nice and big, and, and they're beautiful. Especially, especially the ducklings. So the, uh, the, the and the meat are, is really very good. nice, especially pecking ducks. You like mm. the duck meat, yeah. Yeah, it's very nice. And Moscovy ducks are very nice as well, both. Very and, good. And if you have to kill them, which I, I don't like. That is the sad part <laughs> then of the poultry farm. It, it's a lovely meal, right? It's lovely. That's life on the homestead. You have to come to grips with the fact that um, there is a life cycle here for everything on the farm. Yeah. And, um, See, that's one thing I hate is, is killing uh, animals in general. Yeah. You know, I'd have no problem. I could kill a, a man easier than I could kill an animal because, uh, you know, their love is unforgiving, right? Yeah. But uh, mm. you know, there are certain people on this planet I, I could easily do without. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like somebody's choking one down there right now. You can hear all that. Yeah. This is, this is normal sound here. Yeah, yeah. normal sound on the farm. And I'm we usually to, to sacrifice the, the animals after that they have been uh, producing chicks or ducklings. Yeah. yeah, they've lived a good full life. And yeah, when they have been hatching a lot of uh, chickens, after a while, they are, we take the decision to call them. Yeah. That, that's part of it, and we have to do the same thing with our rabbits, um, oh, yeah. you know. Uh, it, if, you, if you don't, you're, you keep bad genetics going, and that's never a good thing, because yeah. bad genetics, breeding that again, well, exactly. more yeah. disease, more problems, yeah. 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 So I understand you produce some other products here on your farm, Roger. Tell us about those. <laughs> <laughs> I make my own um, alcohol, alcohol drinks. Alcoholic drinks, as you say. 
So uh, most people in town know me for my limoncello, and hence the lemons there. <laughs> so I make limoncello, maracuya liquor, peppermint liquor. Um, another big favorite is Bailey's Irish cream. A Welsh cream. <laughs> you make your own Bailey's Irish cream? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's that's uh, everybody li likes that. They yeah. Like it. yeah. So yeah, it's uh, extra income for me, and plus I, I get to, to test it out first, right? Make sure it's, it's got to be good, right? Yeah, so that's a, a, a pleasant experience right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the limoncello is a very popular drink here in Ecuador, so. A lot of people like that limoncello. I, I hear about it in town a lot. And uh, so you also do um, a peppermint schnapps or yeah. in different liqueurs, maracuya liqueur. Maracuya is a big favorite. Passion fruit. And limoncello, yeah, and, and the Baileys. So they're the three favorites. Yeah. So I know where to come trade for the right stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having us out today. This is uh, an educational experience for sure. And um, if there's anything that people back home should know, I think you've hit it on the head. Grow some of your own food. Um, think about being a little more self-sufficient um, wherever you are. Uh, that's that's a good a good uh, piece of advice, I think. Yeah. And I think the problem here in Bikibamba is that nobody's growing anything here anymore. And that's going to be a big issue in this little village, Verkabamba, uh, because uh, no, nobody's producing anything. And it used to be this was a farming community. Yeah. I mean, this, everybody was farming something. Yeah. Now you have to go farther out to Canara and over to Malacatos exactly. before you see much production. Yeah. And yes, we do need to produce more here. Yeah. But uh, that means educating. People need to be educated, right? Exactly. And so that's where we come in, right? And we got to talk to them. And we try to do our best at education. That's that's why our group exists. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty important. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Roger and Pauline, thank you so much for having Santiago yeah, and I out today. Though. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate pleasure, it very pleasure, much. Mate. Pleasure. Thumbs up. Ciao for now. Mm -hmm.